quick toys. Okay, so we have had this for a little bit, and I have terrible allergies right now. So I was kind of putting off reading it just because I didn't want to sound all scratchy, and I'm sorry that I do. But guess what? If we put it off any longer, the movie will be out. So we're just going to read it. So I kind of wanted to read it. Uh, the actual CD is narrated by the voice actor that plays Mr. Ray. Come on, come on, na, 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 na. <laughs> right. And we are going to do the app as well. So, oh, she doesn't love him, but I do. I like his voice. So the first page, and if you have the book, you can read along with us. If not, this is a good kind of Dad, test if you want to get the book. Stingray. You did touch a stingray, and you did it like five times in a row. You were very brave. She has a pretty mild SPD, but touching a stingray, it's kind of squishy. It feels a little slimy. It's, it's kind of, whoa. Hello, this is Mr. Ray, and this is a story of how Dory finds her family. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. And then they play a sound. Ooh, let's begin now. So I am going to do my best to kind of position the book. We normally have a book holder that helps me, and guess what? We're doing construction upstairs, and I don't know where it is. I have no idea. I can't find the app holder, the book holder, anything. Big mess. I'm sure it's all in one safe place. I tend to do the safe place thing, and then I can't find the safe place. Um, do you remember? Hold on. So, uh, I'm going to also tell you, and I always heard that blue tangs were called Pacific sturgeon fish. I had a friend that was very, 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 very into aquariums. And they are kind of aggressive fish. And my friend had so many problems with this other fish that used to hang out with the blue tang. You know what he said? What? I've spent thousands of dollars trying to save this stupid fish. You know what's going to happen when it dies? What? I'm going to eat it. <laughs> He did. He had to call like fish doctors and he did save it. It, it lived for a good like 20 years, but he, he was really nuts about his fish tank. So uh, I didn't realize she was this. I knew it was the same Dory fish, but I didn't know it was called a blue tang until right now. Dory was a baby blue tang fish. She lived with her parents, Jenny and Charlie, but Dory was not like other fish. She suffered from short term memory loss. Dory's parents tried to help her with her memory but nothing seemed to work. Do you know what happens when you have short-term memory loss? What? You can't remember like what you're talking about. Uh, you can see I kind of have it when I do a video because I forget in the middle of it. So you can remember sometimes long-term memories, like things that happened a long time ago, but short-term memory loss, and there's a movie Memento about it, but short-term memory loss is you forget things that just happened, right? Understand. It's kind of a rare thing. Uh, one day, her parents taught her how to play hide and seek. Her parents hid while Dory counted, but Dory quickly forgot about the game. When her parents came out of their hiding spots, Dory was sad that she had forgotten again. When she was little, Dory was separated from her parents. Alone, she wandered the ocean looking for them. As Dory swam, she asked the different sea creatures she met for help. As the years passed, Dory forgot all about her parents. She knew she was looking for something, but she couldn't remember what. Then one day, Dory saw a boat pass overhead. Nearby, she heard a panicked voice. They took my son, my son, help me, please. The voice was coming from a clownfish named Marlin. He was looking for a boat that had taken his son, Nemo. Dory knew which way to go. Hey, I've seen a boat. Follow me. Together, Dory and Marlin traveled across the ocean and brought Nemo home. When they returned from their adventure, Marlin invited Dory to live with him and Nemo on the Great Barrier Reef. Dory was very happy in her new home. One day, she went with Nemo on a class field trip to see the stingray migration. That's us. The stingrays were going home. Dory swam after the stingrays, but she got too close to the edge of the reef. She was pulled into the undertow. Do you know what the undertow is? Did I tell you? It's like a very strong wave kind of under your feet as you swim. There are different waves under the ocean as well. It's like a current under your feet and can pull you in. Yeah. As her whole world went black, 
she had a fuzzy memory of her parents. When Dory woke up, she had a strange feeling. I remembered something. I actually remembered something, something important. Marlin asked her what it was, but she couldn't remember. But Nemo had heard, I'm sorry, but Nemo had overheard Dory muttering about the jewel of Morrow Bay, California. When he told Dory what she had said, it triggered another flashback. My family! I remember my family! They're out there somewhere! Let's go! We have to go! Dory raced off, but Marlin pulled her back. No, Dory, California's all the way across the ocean. How come every time we're on the edge of this reef, one of us is trying to leave? For once, can't we all just enjoy the view? Dory looked at Marlin sadly. Please, all I know is that I miss him. Do you know what that feels like? Marlin remembered how much he had missed Nemo when he was gone. Marlin sighed. I know what that feels like. He and Nemo agreed to go to California with Dory. With the help of Marlin's sea turtle friend, Crush, the trio soon made it across the ocean. Okay, I have to interject. First of all, you're watching Quake Toys. Our videos often get taken, our reading videos. So um, I just want you to know, we read lots of books and stories. So definitely check us out on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook as Quake Toys. And the other thing I wanted to say, uh, you can't just make it from Australia to California. It would take a long time swimming it, especially for such little fish. I don't know, but we can Google that. Even with the currents, that would take quite a while. When they got to Morrow Bay, Dory swam around shouting for her parents. A group of hermit crabs tried to shush her, but they were too late. Dory had woken a giant squid. The squid chased the trio and grabbed Nemo. I've already been through that level. Oh, she's been playing the app. We're going to do that next. But the squid lost its grip, and the friends were all flung into a nearby kelp forest. As Marlin comforted Nemo... I'm on the kelp forest level. Oh, he lashed out at Dory. I don't like that Marlin is like this. I, I think that's sad. Go wait over there and forget. It's what you do best. Upset, understandably upset, Dory went to find help. Suddenly she heard a voice. Dory swam to the surface, calling out to Nemo and Marlin, guys, I found help. Marlin and Nemo caught up with Dory just in time to see a pair of hands grab her and take her away in a boat. The humans dropped Dory into a fish tank and clipped an orange tag to her fin. Suddenly, an octopus popped out of the sink next to her. His name was Hank. He was actually a septopus, an octopus with seven tentacles. Um, I know some octopus, octopi, octopuses, <laughs> can grow more than one. Like if they lose part of their arm, they can grow it back. So I don't know about that. Interesting. Hank told Dory that she was in quarantine, where sick animals, and also new animals, were treated before being released back into the ocean. Then he explained what her tag meant. It's a transport tag for fish who can't cut it inside the institute. They get transferred to permanent digs, an aquarium in Cleveland. I'm not really sure why they would take fish from the ocean and put them in an aquarium unless they needed a new, like, n new fish for the population for some kind of DNA thing. I'm not really sure why they would do that. I don't think they go and do that as often as the book seems. Dory told Hank that she couldn't go to Cleveland. She had to get back to the Jewel of Morrow Bay, California to find her family. Hank looked at her confused. That's this place, the Marine Life Institute, the Jewel of Morrow Bay, California. You're here. Dory gasped. I'm from here! Hank asked her what exhibit she was from, but Dory couldn't remember. The octopus offered her a deal. If he helped Dory find her family, she would give him her tag so that Hank could go to Cleveland in her place. Dory agreed, and the pair took off. 
As Hank and Dory wandered the Institute, they met Bailey, a beluga whale who could use sound waves to see, and a whale shark named Destiny. Destiny knew Dory. You and I were friends. We talked through the pipes when we were little. You from your exhibit, me from here. We were pipe pals. This is the part where they talk in whale. Do they do that in the app? A little? Yeah. No, not yet. I'll bet they will. Destiny told Dory she was from the open ocean exhibit. She suggested that Dory swim through the pipes to get there, but Hank couldn't fit into the pipes, which is surprising because an octopus can fit in a tiny little space. The only thing it has to be wide enough is its eyes, but everything else on an octopus, because they have no bones, can squish. They're amazing. Hank couldn't fit into the pipes, and Dory was worried she would get lost on her own. She was determined to find another way to the exhibit. Using a baby stroller for transport. Oh my goodness. Dory navigated. I'm not really sure how a fish could breathe in a cup of water, but okay, I'll roll with it. While well, Hank rolled them toward the open ocean exhibit. But the two made a wrong turn because Dory was navigating. They ended up in the touch pool, a tank where children got to touch sea creatures. Hank was scared. That's the part in the commercial. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. They're going to touch me. Ugh. Right? You have an eyelash here. You want to make a wish? I wish you could give me. Oh. Blow harder. Oh, my goodness. It's like, oh, you got it. Good job. Uh, let's see. Oh, so that's kind of like the pool we were at with the stingrays. You know? Hank was scared, but Dory encouraged him to just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Finally, they escaped. Dory looked up. They had made it to the open ocean exhibit. Dory gave Hank her tag. You know, I think I'm going to remember you. Hank shook his head. Ah, you'll forget me in a heartbeat, kid. I'll have a hard time forgetting you, though. Gently, Hank dropped Dory into the tank. Meanwhile, out in the ocean, Marlin and Nemo were looking for a way to save Dory when they met two sea lions. That's the sea lions that, he's like, don't go near the sea lions. And they're like, oh, no, we're friends. Oh, 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 oh. Remember that part in the commercial? Mm -hmm. That's that part. I bet they're going to have it in the app, too. When they met two sea lions, the sea lions explained that the boat would have taken Dory into the Marine Life Institute, where she would be put in quarantine. That's where they put all the new animals to make sure that they're not sick, because you don't want to put an animal that might have diseases in with the general population. I'm very worried Dory's going to infect the whole <laughs> aquarium. Marlin was worried. How would he and Nemo get inside to save Dory? The sea lions called for Becky. I think Becky's hysterical. I just think she's so funny. Look at her eyes. She's got one squinty eye. <laughs> she's got one middle <laughs> The sea lions called for Becky, a bird who lived nearby. Becky scooped up Marlin and Nemo in a bucket and headed for the Institute. But Becky got distracted and left the bucket in a tree. Oh my, my, my. Thinking they had been abandoned, Marlin tipped the bucket over. He and Nemo fell out and landed in an aquarium in the Institute's gift shop. Marlin looked around. Well, at least we're not stuck in a bucket anymore. Oh my goodness. Whoop, let me open this a little bit more so you can see a little more. Back in the open ocean exhibit, Dory spotted a trail of seashells or shells. She followed it and found her childhood home. Her parents weren't inside, but her memories came flooding back. She remembered going outside to look for a, sea sh a shell for her mom and being sucked into the undertow. It was my fault. My parents, I, I lost them. Just then, a crab interrupted Dory's thoughts. He told her that the blue tangs had been taken to quarantine. Dory couldn't believe it. What? No, no, my parents are back in quarantine. They're being shipped to Cleveland, but I, I just, I just got here. The crab gave Dory directions back to quarantine. 
Without Hank around, she would have to go through the pipes. Stealing herself, Dory bravely swam forward. But try as she might, Dory couldn't remember the directions. In no time she was lost. Then Dory remembered destiny. She called out in whale to her friend. Bailey and Destiny gave Dory directions to quarantine. Dory was almost there when she ran into Nemo and Marlin. They had found a way out of the gift shop aquarium and into the pipes. They had been looking for Dory. Marlin apologized to Dory because he did say a really mean thing. What? When he told her forgetting is what you do best. Then he headed back down the pipes. Follow me, it's time to head home. But Dory wasn't ready to go. Wait, wait, wait! Um, my parents are here. The trio continued through the pipes together toward quarantine. But Dory was nervous to meet her parents. Do you think my parents will want to see me? Because I lost them. Marlin smiled at Dory. Ever since I met you, You've shown me how to do stuff I've never dreamed of doing. Dory, because of who you are, you are about to find your parents. And when you do that, you'll, you'll be home. I don't know. I don't know. Do you think she's going to stay with them? I don't know. We'll have to see. When they reached quarantine, the tank of blue tanks had already been loaded on the truck to the aquarium. Suddenly, Hank appeared, lifting Dory and her friends into a coffee pot. He helped them onto the truck. Does this squid have the coffee pot? Let me see where Hank is. Septipus. Nope, this one does not have the coffee pot, but I think there's a Funko one that does. Our Funko ones are coming. I don't know why they took so long to ship to us. And by the way, just in case this gets re-uploaded to somebody else's page, please come over to our YouTube Quake Toys page. We do lots of books and stories and apps and games and unboxing, and we'll see you there, right? So let's keep going. Lifting Dory and her friends into a coffee pot, he helped them onto the truck. Inside, the blue tangs recognized Dory. They explained that her parents had gone to quarantine to find her years ago. They had never returned. Dory realized her parents were gone. I don't have a family. Nemo shook his head. No, Dory, th that's not true. Dory swam backward into the coffee pot and was scooped up by Hank. Looking in the pot, he was surprised to see that Marlin and Nemo weren't there. Your orange friends are on their way to Cleveland. Suddenly, an institute worker grabbed Hank. Surprised, Hank dropped Dory, who was looking very purple there. He watched horrified as the little blue tang spilled onto the floor and down a drain to the ocean. Dory shot out of the drain into the ocean. All alone, she began to panic. What do I do? What would Dory do? <laughs> You're Dory. <laughs> As Dory swam, she spotted a trail of shells. She decided to follow it. In the distance, Dory saw two figures moving toward her. It was her parents. They were overjoyed to see Dory, crying happily. Do a uh, fish cry? <laughs> they had a tear to, oh my goodness. Crying happily, they pulled Dory close. She smiled, it's you. It's really you. Dory's parents explained that when they didn't find her in quarantine, they realized that she must have gone through the pipes to the ocean. They knew they had to do the same thing. They had been waiting in the same spot for years, hoping Dory would Maybe return. Maybe not going to be finding Hank. <laughs> Maybe. When her parents asked her if she had been alone all that time, Dory suddenly remembered her friends. Marlin and Nemo were still on the truck. How are they going to get Cleveland? Maybe, maybe, maybe they're going to live together. Maybe, maybe. 
Dory and her parents swam toward the Institute. Dory called out to Destiny, probably in Whale, to help them. Bailey and Destiny jumped out of their pools and into the ocean. Okay, a little bit hard for fish in the... All right, we'll just let it go. It's a cartoon. The whale shark was thrilled to see Dory, but Dory didn't have any time to waste. Bailey had used his special sight to locate the truck. Uh, okay. Dory asked some otters. Where's my little otter? Oh, because they're the cutest things ever. Dory asked some otters for help. Destiny flipped Dory toward the truck, and one of the otters caught her. On Dory's signal, all the otters began to hug. It was a cuddle party. Traffic stopped. The otter brought Dory to the back of the truck. Hank took Dory and placed her into Marlin and Nemo's tank. Nemo was excited to see Dory. Dory, you came back! Dory smiled at him and Marlin. She couldn't leave her family. Suddenly, Hank knocked on their tank. The fish had to find a way to get back to the ocean before it was too late. And I'm gonna take this moment just to remind you that you should be watching us on Quake Toys YouTube, right? Yes. Q-U-A-K-E-T-O-Y-S. And we read lots of books and stories and we play apps and games and we unbox lots and lots of toys, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you would give us a thumbs up, that would be awesome. And subscribe and all that other good jazz. We're also on Facebook and Instagram as Quake Toys. So let's keep going with the story and see how this even worked. As Marlin called for Becky. Becky? Boy, Becky, you're big in the story. <laughs> she kind of reminds me of the pigeon. From the pigeon app and books. <laughs> She's very funny. As Marlin called for Becky, Hank put Marlin and Nemo into the bucket. Hank had just picked up Dory when Becky swooped in and grabbed the bucket. She didn't realize Dory was still on the truck. Dropping Marlin and Nemo into the ocean, she turned around to go back for Dory. Back on the truck, Dory tried to convince Hank to come with them. She didn't want him to go to Cleveland. Because the best things happen by chance, because that's life, and that's you being with me out in the ocean, not safe in some stupid glass box. Hank agreed. Just then, the truck doors slammed shut, locking Dory and Hank inside. Hank was ready to give up, but Dory refused. There's got to be a way. There's always a way. Looking up, the two spotted a vent in the ceiling. Hank was relieved. Holy carp! I almost said the other thing, by the way. Holy carp, instead of, you know, what word. There is another way. Together, the pair squeezed through the vent. Holding Dory. Hank stretched himself across the windshield. The two institute workers inside the truck jumped out. Oh my goodness, what chaos. Hank took the driver's seat and set Dory in a cup. Um, I don't know how Hank hit the uh, gas pedal and knew how to drive a truck. Oh my goodness. He steered while Dory navigated. Dory knew they had to get back to the ocean. Nervously, Dory looked at Hank. She was going to ask him to do something crazy. And again, this is a cartoon. There's no pollution when a truck goes into the ocean. He smiled. I'm okay with crazy. Who does he sound like with that? Do you mind if I say something crazy? I love crazy. <laughs> Together, they drove the truck off the road and into the ocean. Dory, Hank, and the rest of the fish. Is the truck broken? Uh, yeah, it would be pretty broken after going into the ocean with the salt water. Dory, Hank, and the rest of the fish fell into the ocean. And let's pretend that there wasn't broken glass and debris and all this kind of stuff. And oil and gas and pollutants. And that everybody's okay. Dory, Hank, and the rest of the fish fell into the ocean where Dory's friends and family were waiting. They were free! A short time later, Dory found herself back on the Great Barrier Reef. Hank, Destiny, Bailey, and her parents had come to live with her 
Marlin, we and didn't Nemo. Get to, we didn't get to the Utopia one. Uh, we have it somewhere. We didn't do it? No. Oh, we'll have to do the Zootopia one next for sure. And Frozen Fever we didn't do either, but I think we have it. All right, if we don't, if we haven't done it, we'll definitely do it. Um, the only one I can't do right now is a good dinosaur, because I'll get all oh, so it. But the others I can do. Uh, one day, Marlin followed Dory to the drop-off. He was worried that she would forget where she was going and get lost. Dory stopped at the edge, looking out into the vast blue. Then she turned to Marlin. I was just enjoying the view. Marlin settled next to Dory and turned around. Wow, it really is quite a view. Dory looked behind her. Her combined family was gathered together, smiling at her. Dory had a feeling she'd remember this moment forever. The end, right? I want to thank you guys so much for watching Quake Toys. Please give us a thumbs up if you like all these books. And we're going to do the app in just a minute because it came out yesterday. It says, what would Dory do? Dory has always suffered from short-term memory loss. Then she suddenly remembers her parents. Join in the fun as Dory and her friends set off on an unforgettable adventure to find her family. Based on Disney Pixar's hit film, which hasn't even come out, not sure how it's a hit film, Finding Dory, this storybook and CD set features thrilling sound effects, word-for-word -word narration, and original character voices from the movie. So all those highlighted words on the CD, uh, you can hear the actual character do the voices, which is kind of fun. I kind of think Joy was supposed to be um, Ellen DeGeneres, who does Dory. I think she was supposed to be Joy, and then they decided to do this instead. Because Joy's voice patterns kind of sound like they were written for her. I always thought that. That's just my fan theory. Thank you guys again so much for watching Quake Toys. Subscribe if you get a chance, because we do lots of books and stories. We have a lot more to read. Sorry about my scratchy allergy voice. Yikes, right? Can't control the pollen. Thank you guys again. And we'll see you soon. We're going to come back and do the Finding Dory app. We also have the joke book, the little golden book, a whole bunch of other books. And the other books give a lot more hints to the story, to things that this book didn't include in it. So thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Do you want to say thank you? Bye. <laughs> She's making a face at me. Thanks, guys. Bye.